Welcome to the MC talk show and the WWE. No, 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 it's not. No? No. Does this say this TV? No. This isn't what? even the WWE, this is YouTube. We're not on WWEShop.com? No. We're not even sponsored. We're not even on Netflix? No. We're not, not even on WWE Network on YouTube? No, we're not even on Tubi, dude. We're not sponsored by any of these things, by the way. What about Red Tube? No. Unless you're doing something that I don't know about. <laughs> so, if I switch my voice to going, Holy night, yeah! No, no. No? No. But that doesn't make me LA night? No. Well, what about The Rock? Can, can we do The Rock? But you can't smell. Oh. I can smell it just fine, sir. <laughs> I think this is something, something random with some complex thrown in. Hmm. Sounds familiar. Yeah. So that mm. must mean that... Welcome to Random Complex at most! I don't think the most. Probably, maybe, somewhere around the lines of several people watching... On YouTube or on like their phone or tablet or computer or. Uh, can you watch YouTube know. on a pickle? Uh, well, 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 what? C can you watch YouTube on a pickle? YouTube pickle! That's what we're called! No. Damn it! <laughs> so it must be random conflicts. Yep. <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah. Since we're random conflicts, and we're topics of randomness. We're talking more randomness today? Exactly. More random stuff. Yeah, today's actually a bit of a rant. Just some stuff that went on. Totally hopefully our, a rant. And hopefully our stories can help you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm John. I'm Zach. Matt's not here today. Nor poor the... Matt. Huh? Poor, poor Matt. He's he's fine. He just couldn't make it to the topic today. That's all. Um, they don't know that. Well, they do. Well, I just told now them. they do. Exactly. But we could have just sent out an RIP for him. No. But it's just nice. He, he's perfectly fine though. He's literally <laughs> just sitting at his house. <laughs> probably uh, probably watching a show or doing homework with his kids. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but anyways. And Matt, if you're listening. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Is it good today? Are you doing all right? How are the kids? You, you know, you realize you just comment gonna... down below. <laughs> Let's work some things out. <laughs> no, no, it's just, he's good. <laughs> um, he'll probably be in the next topic or the one after. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, totally, because um, one of the things that we're going to do together is whenever we have a chance to get together, we're, we're planning on doing a D&D, &D. Mm. Um, so we might actually do a D&D &D topic to explain how to, like... How it works, all that fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, what it takes to start one up and, yeah. like kind of the rules behind it because I'm not I want to say that I don't know much about d and I'm just not that It's been a while It's been a mm -hmm. while and like I need a refresher course mm -hmm. Yep Now in other news um, you want to tell them about what happened today with your with your adventure yeah, yeah, I, I got it. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been recorded on, what, Tuesday? Mm-hmm. Or no, today's, no uh, Thursday. today's Thursday, yeah. And last Friday, I was driving from said place to go back to my house. And... I happen to be driving past a school zone, and I thought I was going 20, and the school zone is posted a 20, but I got pulled over for going 30 and a 20. That's fine. 
mean, I don't debate that police radars are functional where my speedometer was not. The only thing is, is I thought I was going one speed, and apparently I wasn't. And when that happens, best thing to do is not give the cop that pulled you over a hard time. Especially when you know that there's some problems with your vehicle. Um, because usually, like, they, they're not there to give you a hard time. They're not there to be ass clowns or anything like that. You actually uh, have a lot of respect for police officers. Yes, I got a lot of respect for police officers. I wanted to be one at one time, and that's besides the point. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that if you show me some respect, mm -hmm. I'm going to get that same respect back. And if... Depending on the cop's demeanor, if the cop is an a hole, mm -hmm. then I'm going to be an a hole back. That's just all to it. But if the cop is nice and and just is just doing their job, mm -hmm. and you know within their right, and they're not trying to over jump their bounds, then you know play ball with the cop. But that's all you gotta do. It, it makes your, it makes their job easier. It makes your job easier as a, a driver that got pulled over. Yeah, because they're not just gonna pull you over out of the blue. I mean, there might be some cops that do that, but it's more paperwork for the cop, mm -hmm. actually, and like. If you know that you didn't do something wrong, don't be aggressive to the cop because that just makes the cop think that you have done something wrong. And just, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Um, a lot of people are on this tension about their First Amendment rights, and by all means, if that's your thing, then go ahead and make your paper boo. But there's a difference between infringing on your First Amendment and your Fourth Amendment rights rather than a cop doing their job. You can state your piece without being rude, basically, is what you're yeah. saying. It's like, hey, you got pulled over. Technically, you're in a situation where you are being detained mm -hmm. because you are not allowed to go anywhere while you're being pulled over. And the sooner that the cop can do their job, the sooner you can become undetained. Mm -hmm. um, and while you're detained, by rights, you know, the cop has to check your driver's license. They have to check your proof of insurance. Because that's part of their job. It's not like them stopping you on the street and being like, hey, I want your ID card, I want your social security number, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. It's not anything like that. You're in a semi-ton automobile mm -hmm. at the lowest weight of an automobile being close to 500 pounds mm -hmm. and that's just bare chassis not counting like the motor and all the other crap that's part of your vehicle imagine going like 60 miles per hour on a highway and losing control of that thing you're going to kill yourself mm -hmm. as well as anybody you've hit mm -hmm. And with cars being made cheaper nowadays, that's even more of a hazard. Mm -hmm. Because you're basically driving a, a fragile bullet down the highway. Mm -hmm. And, like, people think, oh, you can pull me over, but I don't have to show you my ID or whatever. Bullshit. 
if you're being pulled over, you're being detained. So, best thing to do, just follow the cop's directions, and not have to you'll be out of there. <laughs> yeah, and not have to detain, you're getting a warning anyway. You just, yeah. you didn't get a warning because you drove through a school zone. And I happened to get a ticket mm-hmm. for going 30 and 20, yeah. and I don't make that much. Obviously, I'm doing YouTube. That says everything. We don't make any money. <laughs> no. Um, so, with that being said, I went to the courthouse today, and I played in no contest to this being ticket, which allowed me to express what was going on, and I explained that well, I, my speedometer was saying that I was going 20 in the school zone, mm-hmm. which I tried to go around 20 anyways. I'm from West Virginia. The school zone here is 15. Mm-hmm. So I know roughly between 15 and 20 is usually a school zone. Mm-hmm. And... I try to make sure I'm going around 20 because in my truck, usually I'm going under that. I'm going about five under when I see that I'm going 20. So that's how I regulate that. But this time I was coasting down a hill and my truck was showing that I was going 20, but the coasting was bringing me to a third. And that's what got me. But the judge that I talked to was very understandable. And he said because I had a perfect driving record and that everything was up to date and that I didn't get the top any issues, instead of paying $225 for the ticket, I only had to pay... It was total to, in total 200 a total of two hundred dollars. Mm. Still, then, yeah, which more or less broke you, but you still had a little bit of change. Yeah, and, and that, then on the way back to West Virginia, I had my brother driving my truck, and then the tire pops. We park at Sheets. We park at a gas station, like you said. And we had to jack the tire up. We had to find a place that had his tire, because your tire is a hard tire to find. My truck takes a 255, 65, 17. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I drive a, a Ford F-150. Mm-hmm. It needs work. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's hard to find a tire. And nine times out of ten, when they do have a tire... It's for more than I have. And you had enough, just that's all you had. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but usually it's even more than that. Yeah. Like if they have to order the tire, I, I'm looking at like $500 per tire. Yeah. Well, the last time it was like 170 per tire at one place. Well, we got down Wellsburg, they wanted like 500 per tire. Oh, wow. That's... That's way too much. And I'm like, no, thank you. I will find somewhere else. But yeah, I've had a, I've had somewhat of a strenuous day today. So that was my little rant. What about your rant? Um, funny how you talk about getting pulled over. This um something similar happened to me. I'd say a few months ago. I think I told you this story. Um, I was um, driving home. I think it was from your house, actually. And it was dark, and it was pouring down rain. So I was driving a little slower than usual just to be cautious because... Oh, yeah, that one time that you yeah. told me that you got pulled over yeah. for driving slow. Yeah. Um, the car behind me thought I was driving too slow and was suspicious. So they they reported me. <laughs> I got pulled over for driving too slow because the person behind me thought I was drunk. I wanted to see how that phone call went. I wasn't even going that slow. It was going maybe 50. And now the, um, 
the the cop when he pulled me over, he's like, are, are you okay, sir? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you haven't been drinking, have you? And he explained to me about the ring report. I'm like, no. And he's like, how far away is your house? I'm like, just, just right up the road there. He's like, just just get home. Go to sleep. <laughs> I wanted to see how that one conversation happened with the person calling 911 yeah. while driving. Here's the thing, though. Technically, they did the right thing because if you're suspicious of the person in front of you swar- swerving or driving. Well, like, here in West Virginia? Yeah. The um, the um, nine one one dispatch would actually ask you if you're driving. Yeah, you have to admit you have to say you pulled over. You um, if you're driving, they'll say, "Well, call us back when you get a chance to pull over." Yeah, but we will not take your statement while you're driving. Yeah, and that's the way it should be. And the people that were that did report me. They, in my opinion, they did nothing wrong because they were suspicious because I was driving slow. But, but it was also rainy rain, and night. <laughs> wet condition. Dark. It was also 35 out and I've slipped on ice in 40s. So I was yeah. I was being cautious. But <laughs> Like I said, they did nothing wrong. I don't fault them for it. Just it was inconvenient at most. <laughs> well, I've also seen people call 911 through YouTube videos as well and while driving and trying to get someone else in trouble for like speeding or whatever and they're like well do you also want to report yourself because you're driving while you're talking on a phone yeah like because we can make both of these, because yeah. eventually you're going to cause an accident because you're not focusing on the road. No. You're focusing on the exactly car in front of you just so you can tell us while you're driving. Yep. In this case, it could have been someone else in the car with her or him. I, I don't know. I wasn't the person. I wasn't. I, I couldn't see behind me, obviously. <laughs> well, yeah. You don't know what's going on in the other car. Yeah, and like I said, I 100% do not fault them because it... They were concerned. Just it could have been the passenger. Yeah, fault. yeah. But like any time. And if you guys do think there's the person in front of you is drunk, that is what you do. You report it. But but I don't go drink. Over. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, if you're alone, if you're not alone, then go ahead and have your passenger, you know, call in the license plate number. Yeah. You know, have things taken care of that way. Mm-hmm. And that just helps keep one more idiot off the road. Mm-hmm. Um, you shouldn't be driving drunk and swerving anyway. No, <laughs> you shouldn't be driving tired because that's also driving under the influence yeah. in most states. Um, also, in some states... Um, smoking cigarettes while driving is considered illegal. Really? Hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it's a, it's a hindrance. Yep. Normally I would agree with that, but I wouldn't trust you if you haven't smoked. Because I know like you have Tourette's and it's like steadier if you're... Yeah. Which I'm not really sure if I mentioned that on here or not. I probably did. But yeah, I have Tourette's, so my arm kind of jerks. It probably doesn't help that I also have nerve damage in that part. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Smokey, calm. No Smokey. Ah! Yeah. It's weird that it actually helps you, that part of you, but... Well, yeah. if you did... I don't know if you knew, know this or not, mm. but one trick that you're taught in the military as a sniper is to smoke a cigarette. Because it studies your nerves and... Um, nicotine helps calm your muscles. Mm. It helps muscle spasms. It helps with relaxing your um, your tension mm-hmm. so that the um, sight doesn't sway as much. You mm-hmm. have more of a accurate shot. And now, since they're trying to get rid of cigarettes in general... Um, penemesite. Something like that. Um, is a type of pill that snipers will take right before they're shot. Mm. 
So yeah, that's that's cool to know. Mm. <laughs> but it was actually a way for us neighbors to have like a steady aim. Mm. But now that actually gives you away because it's extra heat. Mm-hmm. And with newer scopes, being able to have heat detection, that would be enough to, like, single you out. Mm-hmm. And plus, you can't really smoke a cigarette covered in a ghillie suit. Mm-hmm. Because you have all these vines all over your face and smoking a cigarette, just that. Your ghillie suit's up in fire and mm-hmm. so are you. Mm-hmm. So that gives away your position. Anyways, enough about that. Mm-hmm. Um. Hmm. Hmm. St. Patrick's Day. Mm-hmm. That's this month. So it's Easter. Easter's this month. Right? Yeah, it's it's, it's usually in April. It's actually this month. Like once every so many years, it happens in March. It's um. I can tell you the exact day. That there's a calendar up there. Hold on. Um, yeah, Easter is the 31st, the last Ooh. day of, yeah. Hot damn. Yeah. Did not even know that. Yeah. Never once have I seen it in March. Every so many years. Hmm. I've, I've seen it before. Is it always on a leap year? I don't think it's on a leap year all the time, but it's like every so many years they do it. It's weird. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh. Yep. On a completely unrelated note to everything else we're talking about. Well, nothing's uh, related at this moment. Well, we were kind of staying related <laughs> with, like, court and uh, cars. Um, but speaking of court, you hear um, about the Yuzu emulator for Switch. Um, the Nintendo Switch emulator. Since we've talked about emulators before, I figured I'd mention this. Um, they got... Um, they got shut down by Nintendo. Nintendo um, sued them, and they settled out of court for two point five million dollars. Well, keep that conversation going. Mm-hmm. And um, as a result of that, um, Citra, because it was worked on by a lot of the same developers, got shut down as well. It was the three D S emulator. So it's kind of an interesting thing since we're talking about go- court and obeying the rules. But technically, emulators aren't illegal. It's just um, no, they're they're like an archive. Yeah, just um, it's like how they went about their business was how was gray area. And Nintendo, whether they had a case or not, they more or less knew that they could get them shut down because they didn't have the money for the court costs and all that. But um, I've never like seen a game franchise or a station franchise like Nintendo really caring if someone is like rendering their um, stuff. Usually they don't make too big a deal about it. Um, they uh, go after um, emulation the sites that have the games on them. They've done that before. They usually don't mess <laughs> with emulators. I think the only real reason was because of... Um, they um, had, like, a day one patch for their emulator to run Tears of the Kingdom, which is the newest Zelda game that's out. Nintendo wants you to buy their games. And when there's, like, a day one patch to where it works on the computer where you can basically pirate it, I think that was Nintendo's concern. You know what I mean? <laughs> they want to make a little money off their games. <laughs> well, yeah, but they can yeah. do on um, Xbox is there. And put it on PC, too. Yeah. Well, they try to push it to every platform that they can. Yeah. Because they can get more from platform cost. That's true. Oh, if Nintendo did something like Game Pass, at least on PC, and released their older Nintendo games on no, PC. No, I mean, on. what Microsoft is doing is that, okay, like... Um, they want you to buy their games rather than their systems. Cause, um, Gears of War. Yeah. Or anything made from Microsoft. Yeah. That's usually should be um, Xbox only. But now it's Xbox, PC, and sometimes even PlayStation now because they're because remo- they're moving because they're moving Starfield to PlayStation and they're moving a bunch of games to Nintendo. 
And I know they'll never do it, but honestly, I think Nintendo wants to make money because this is actually something that the main guy at Steam said. The piracy is a result of you not providing a service or not providing a service well enough, right? Mm -hmm. Nintendo should literally, like, take their Switch online and make it so you have access to all those games on PC. No more emulators. Yeah. Well, or just their emulators. Because if they make it available, there'd be no reason to, pirate, to put them on there. And let's say you want to go back to games that... And Nintendo would be making like, bank. They don't have on their site. Mm. Like original Zelda or yeah. like original Donkey Kong. Because the, like, they That's... don't have that stuff on their site. Yeah, they do. Switch Online. They do? Yeah. That's literally what the NES games and stuff are. It's not every single Nintendo game, but it's a lot of them. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying they should put it on a PC too. It makes they they'd be making bank because there's people that don't need, don't even own a Switch that would get that because they want to play the games. They don't want to mess with setting up an emulator because sometimes I don't know if you notice from watching me setting setting up emulators can be a pain in the butt. <laughs> yes, but you also have to know which emulator to set up, yeah. which core to get. It, even if it's you a have, good emulator yeah. or a bad emulator, Sometime, how well is it optimized to your computer? Plus, um, with some of the th some of them, you have to, um, in quotes, upload your own BIOS <laughs> to put on your system. <laughs> he does quotes in air quotes. <laughs> For those that can't see, he goes quote quote. <laughs> But, yeah, it's actually more work to pirate games than it is to actually go and buy them. Yeah. And if you look hard enough, you can probably find a legit copy of a game mm -hmm. unpirated, probably somewhere on eBay or wherever. Yeah, and here's the thing. Yes, I do use emulators, but my PS2 well, live... That's convenient. Yeah, it's my my PS2 library is what's on my emulators. Like the games you see me play, I own those games ninety percent of the time. And that's the way it should be. Yeah. Um, the other ten percent, I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> but um, you play the fifth one. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it, it's one of those things where to save from pirating. Like, Microsoft just like, hey, here, you want to play our games on a PlayStation? Here you go. And they don't do that with every game, but they're putting more and more of those games out on other systems, and they make more money that way. No, they're actually doing it with every game. They mm -hmm. did it with Starfield, mm -hmm. um, all their um, Fallout. Well, Fallout's because were... Because now yeah. they own Fallout. Yeah. They own Bethesda. Mm -hmm. Or partnered with Bethesda. Mm -hmm. So anything related to Bethesda, um, I think they're even doing um, Halo. So I think they're in charge of Halo now. They've been in charge of Halo. Okay. Because I okay. know at one time it was just Xbox exclusive. Mm -hmm. Now you can get... Um, it's the new Master Chief collection on... It's on um, PC. It's not on Sony yet. It's I on... I thought in March it was supposed to be going to Sony. Um, Either March or April. Might have to look that up. I'm not sure. Because I know it's been on PC for... For a while. For a while now. So I didn't think of even mentioning it for PC. It's because Microsoft's thing is they, they want to sell you the games. You, they get yeah. more money out of the games than you do the systems. And it's such a low cost. But mm. you actually get cheaper on their, yeah. on their console yeah. because they're like, well, we make so much more giving it to other consoles mm. so we can actually mm. charge less for the people that buy it for our consoles. Mm -hmm. And that gives the people that, like, say you have an Xbox and you want to play um, Halo. Mm. Maybe you want to play Halo. Um, I'm not a big Halo fan. 
But um, Halo. Uh, I think Infinite's the newest one. Okay, Halo Infinite, or Halo Two, or Halo Reach, um, which comes in the Master Chief Collection. But like. At one point in time, you wouldn't have been able to play those games on a PlayStation. Because they weren't available. I'm going to look that up because I'm curious now if that one has gone out. But, yeah, we can look it up later. I'm just fact checking so we can get our facts straight, like when it is or if it is. That's all. Well, anyways, it's one of those things where if a game was made by. Microsoft, it automatically was only to uh, the Xbox. Mm -hmm. Or if the game was made by Sony, it was only to PlayStation. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's games that people miss out on because they're console exclusives because they're made by the same people that made that console. Mm -hmm. But there's third-party developers out there, like what the test was, um, Sega Now, um, that will sell to the consoles, but not strictly limited to those consoles. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Where um. I think that that allows more people to get involved with those games and create a wider um, a wider fan base for those games. I did believe you, but I was just curious. April of 2024, so April this year. Wow. Yeah, it's coming out. I was somewhere in the ballpark. Yeah. No, I believed you. I just wanted to get my facts straight. <laughs> I wasn't sure myself. Yeah. I thought maybe March or April or somewhere around that. Yeah. But... Well, we got a guarantee. But. And it is Halo Infinite. I thought it was just going to be the older ones, but. That's... Well, I thought it was going to be a newer redo mm -hmm. of the uh, Master Chief collection, like the whole. They might do that too, collection. but that's just what I skimmed through. Because that's what's on PC. Yep. But, anyways, that's still really cool mm -hmm. for it to go to Sony because. More it's players. It's a Microsoft game. Yeah. What console does Microsoft run? Xbox. They've actually been really friendly to Nintendo the entire like Switch lifespan. So they put more they put a bunch of rare games on the Switch Online thing on the sixty four games. They put Cuphead, which was a Microsoft slash Nindy Studio game, on Switch. Um they put a few Microsoft games on Switch. Well, Cuphead was also a computer. Yeah, but it was Per, uh, Microsoft published it for them. Like, they helped them get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that's one thing that I think Sony and Nintendo should take into consideration. Like, hey, we know that not every person can afford a Switch or not every person can go and buy a PlayStation 4, but we still want to pump all these games out. Yeah. We want people to play our games, yeah. and that's exactly what Microsoft is doing. Yeah, and like I said, even if they don't want to put their newest games, they have this entire backlog of games yeah. for like all these old systems. That and all the emulators show is that there's a market for it on PC. Yeah, put it on PC. <laughs> and I doubt Nintendo will do it, but and it's if just, you want to make it legitimate, yeah. then you know make a low price range. Yeah. Like a, um, words not working with brain, um, like a subscription. Yeah, that's why I said. Yeah. And that's one thing that Do you like Microsoft Nintendo is doing, but <clears throat> give us more platforms. Yeah, like do what Game Pass does where it's PC and Xbox. But let's say... You only have an Xbox. You don't have a PC. You know, since or actually, Nintendo and Microsoft are somewhat close, mm -hmm. Nintendo, why not give Microsoft 
the okay to upload some of your older Zelda games. Yeah. That would be appreciated. And then you wouldn't see so many people going onto a store or onto a... Um, yeah, because if you go to a used uh, game store, Nintendo doesn't get a dime of that. No. Even if you buy it legitly like that. I mean, I'm all for used game stores because I like buying old it's games. It's 100% of the profit. Yeah. If it's an old game, it's 100% of the profit. Yeah. That that store is collecting. And that's from somebody who actually likes collecting old games because you've seen my collection of games before. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you're complaining that because... Um, but when you're talking about emulators... One way to cut back on those emulators is having more ways for us to play older games, mm -hmm. and we may not have those consoles anymore. Yeah, we may actually have those games, but maybe the consoles still working. Yep. And that's one of the things that, let's say you, you wanna be able to play Nintendo games, but Nintendo consoles now are so overpriced, it, the it's so hard to get one. Yeah, actually, the systems aren't that bad. It's the uh, games that are overpriced. Like, just out of curiosity, let me look up an NES. Well, an NES, depending on if you're using eBay or... Um, they can run anywhere from. They could go between ten to five hundred dollars. Which usually they're clones, so it's hard to find one. But well, I'm not talking about clones. I'm talking yeah. about like a legit original yeah. game. Hundred sixty-five dollars by Nintendo themselves selling an old one. <laughs> <laughs> What's oh, for it, it comes with duck hunt, a light gun, and yeah. Okay, well, that's actually interesting. <laughs> all right, this is this is Ram Complex. <laughs> so you get random topics. Huh, I was just curious to see what the systems are selling for right now. But anyway, it's like uh, Nintendo. You don't want people to pirate your games. That's completely within your. But you also don't give us many choices when it comes down to how we can actually play your games. Yep. You want to make money off of older games. You don't want to have emulators putting your games up on their sites. Well, <clears throat> it's pretty easy from my point of view. You, you make a way to do it. You make... <laughs> A site that is legit. That let's say, like charge five or ten bucks per game. If or you don't have a Nintendo system, you can still play these games. Yeah. Make a network mm -hmm. on computer or any device that can work like a computer that can use a similar website that functions like that. That can be like, oh, okay, well, I type in this address. Mm -hmm. This takes me to said store or said proper emulator for that company. And let's say it's Nintendo, so you go to Nintendo.com. This isn't real or anything. But you go to Nintendo.com slash emulator and... Please don't type that in. It's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> I said that in the I, I know. It's double tracking. But you go on and it's like their website and you have an option of, you know, an emulator. Mm -hmm. And let's say the emulator portion of the site is blocked behind a, um, maybe an ad site mm -hmm. um, for free trial or to be able to play the games for free, mm -hmm. but your game's going to get interrupted every so often with an ad. Mm -hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad. Because they'll pause the game. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it will pause the game. Mm -hmm. 
But it, let's say you want to play the game without any ads. Well, subscription base. Here's a twenty dollars subscription for two hundred games. Yep. Here's a thirty dollar subscription for three hundred games. Yep. Or another option is since they have the switch, since they have the switch online service already on Switch. Um, make you pay like 10 or 20 bucks more, you have access to that on PC as well. Yeah. The same collection. Or not even more, but as long as you have like the access to Switch Online or said Nintendo Online, whatever, mm. you should be able to access that anywhere that's, mm. that you can put a URL. Yeah. And be able to pull up the site and be like, okay, here's their site, here's their emulator, mm -hmm. here's my twenty dollars and an emulator gift card. Mm -hmm. Take my money because I want to play that game. Yeah, and I don't have that damn console. <laughs> bada boom, bada bing. You get twenty dollars and any subscription, I get to play your game. Mm -hmm. It's that damn easy. A five-year-old could figure that out. Mm. Which puts me on a whole new topic of fucking idiots running the fucking government. Uh, let's... No, we don't need to get no, political. We, we need to go there. We don't need to get political. <laughs> we need to go there. We haven't been very political on this channel before. And I want to have some sort of politics... On this channel for you guys to, uh, you know, curse me, cuss me, whatever. Because I want to see what side of the fence you guys are really tiptoeing on. So here's my point for you. Screw the government. Because my point of view is there's a bunch of dumbass old guys in the White House that don't know what the hell they're doing half the time. And he's bringing that the other half of the fucking time. So that's one part of politics. Second part of politics. Get old people out of the fucking White House. Get people that don't know what the hell they're doing. It's got in their head so far up each other's asses. That they can't blow a fart. Without someone else knowing about it. Yeah, get Biden out of the White House, get, you know, what's his face out of the White House, the guy that's on the $1,000 bill, whatever. Yeah, get Trump out of the White House, get a 25-year-old grad student, put him in the White House, make sure he's got two cents of a brain, and bada boom, bada bing, you got a good guy to run the country. Or... And here's a big or for you, folks. Give up the damn left radical dumb ass politics. Honest, either side, because there's extreme one way, extreme the other way. It's like okay, use extreme common sense. Extreme <laughs> political dumbasses yeah. that think, oh my, my shit doesn't stink, or my ass doesn't fart, and. Like, get people in the fucking White House that actually knows the difference between the actual Second Amendment right and the Second Amendment that people think that they fucking know. Because apparently people don't know jack shit. <sighs> this is going to be a ranting day. Uh, I, I think they get the picture. You, you can you can stop with that one. They... they they get the picture? Yeah. I don't think they get the picture. I, I think they, I, I, I think I need to draw the picture out a little bit. Nah, I think they get the picture. There's old people in the White House that don't understand how to, you know, handle their own thoughts. They got to have someone whispering in their ear. And you got this one old guy with a toupee that likes to, uh, you know, say, hey, we're going to save the country. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. You're not really We're going to build a fence. You're not really strong one way or the other. You're just. 
Uh, and then we got this other old guy in the White House that falls every time he hiccups. Or he loses a brain cell every time he farts. That's just you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> or you get these 20, 30, 40 year old sons of older presidents and think that they can do no wrong. Because, oh, my daddy was the president. Oh, I can do this. I can do that. Ah, shut up. Politics need to be by the people for the people. And that's mm -hmm. just plain it. If you have someone running the country that doesn't know what the hell they're doing, they should not be running the fucking country. And whether you agree or disagree with whether or not the current president's doing a good, good job, that's up to you. Go ahead and comment below. Zach's just putting his two cents in because he felt like ranting. <laughs> no, it's a ranty episode, yeah. so... And I... Let me know. Am I the only one that feels this way? Tell me. I'm uh, curious. I want to know. I, I think you're just... Tell me what you think of the Second Amendment right. Tell me, is that a right to own a firearm, or is that a permission to own a firearm? Is that the right to bury militia, which is the right to stand up for your rights, the right to um, create a militia to protect yourself against the government, if the government is in the wrong? That's the Second Amendment right. But people believe that the Second Amendment right just means that they have the God-given right to own a firearm. That's not the case. And there's too many people that believe that. Yeah. One way or the other, please comment below. We'd love to hear your opinions on that. I mean, anybody can go to Washington, D.C., go to the, the Municipal Museum of History, mm -hmm. and they can look at the regular... Decorations of Independence, right there. Constitution. There's also, yeah, the, whatever. <laughs> but there's also a copy in um, Boston, Massachusetts, and I believe their um, Museum of Freedom. Mm -hmm. So there's two places where people can actually look at the Declaration of Independence. The Constitution, you mean? It's the same thing. No, the Declaration was signed as a way to us to escape Britain. The Constitution was... Sorry, we just had a little discussion off the microphone. But with the ranting, I honestly want, want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you believe that like our Constitution gives you the right to own a gun just for your sake? Or do you believe the fact that, you know, you do have the right to bear militia if the government is forcing their will upon you? Which side of the coin do you favor? Because it's not completely one-sided with that fact. You and me actually have some differing views on it, so it's understandable. And yeah. Me and my brother, like he said, we also differ in views. And the actual saying for the Second Amendment right is that you do have the right to bear arms, which most people detain as you have the right to build militia, which some people think is just the right to own a firearm to protect only the people in your home or, you know, protect your safety. But that's also giving you the right to not just protect your safety, but to protect all civilians mm -hmm. around you because you're fighting for for yourselves. You're, you feel like the government has done you wrong, so therefore you're building a militia against the government. Mm -hmm. That's the Second Amendment right. But too many people are so one-sided that if you tell them that and you show them a copy of the Declaration of Independence or the Constitutional Bill, 
they'll say it's wrong. It's a forgery. It's fake. And, like, there's two places that you can go see it for yourself. And, matter of fact, they post a picture of it online. Mm -hmm. You can see it from their website. Mm -hmm. But if you actually want a closer look at it, you can find out where any copy of it is. There's two regular copies, two original copies. Every library has one. A copy of it, not like the main thing. Well, main copy. Yeah. Um, but if you want like an enhanced copy, you can probably find it in any library. Or online, like you or said. Or any courthouse should have a mm. copy of it. Because, one, it's the one thing that every courthouse in the country should be following. Mm -hmm. If that courthouse is not following the Bill of Rights or the Declaration of Independence, then there's a problem there. They're not really there for your rights. They're not there for you. Mm -hmm. They're just there as a money grab. And... You know, this is kind of all over the place, and it's kind of meant to be. But it's also to bring up a conversation. Not a heretical conversation where you're threatening to blow up the... Um, Let's not go there because I don't want to get demonetized. Wh whatever. <laughs> yeah. But... Is there to be like, well, here's my thoughts, and I come to this channel with peace mm -hmm. of mind. Mm -hmm. I come with good intentions, but this is my thoughts. Mm -hmm. This is how I think. Mm -hmm. And anybody else that comments has their right to their own thoughts. Mm -hmm. And should be seen in that sense. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying any way, shape, or form, any commenter or any person that is even thinking about commenting is going to be wrong. Because in your opinion, no. Because in your opinion, no opinion is wrong. No opinion is wrong. Yeah. It it's just if it goes against what has been stated for fact, mm -hmm. rather than. Something that can be left for interpretation. Mm -hmm. And if it's left up for interpretation, then everybody can be correct. Mm -hmm. It's your point of view on a subject. Mm -hmm. And not everybody is going to agree on the same topic. Mm -hmm. You and me don't always agree on the same topic. We're two different people. Mm -hmm. We don't share the same brain. But we share enough intelligence to be able to understand that even though maybe our ideas differ in some cases, we can talk about the situation like like-minded yeah. individuals mm -hmm. and not try to put holes in each other's houses. Um or throw a microphone across the room because we don't agree on something. Mm -hmm. And there's no point of any discussion ever getting to that point. And we'll go ahead and close up with um, some things that we're doing later on in the channel since it's still a random topic. We'll just go ahead and add this stuff in. Um, <clears throat> we have talked for a while on the channel about creating a production that's going to be separate from Random Conflux and that it's going to more or less base itself on animation or anime style of cartooning. But we need to work more on it and see what kind of um, what kind of sites and um, software um, we can use and what really fits our tone and how we want to. 
how we want to progress moving forward and like what really works for us mm -hmm. and that's going to take some time that's going to take some money and it is unreasonable to think that we can get it done within this year um but we have been working on it behind the scenes of Random Conflux. And we have been trying to get moving. But there have been many obstacles in the way. Um, and every time, every year that it takes us a little bit longer, I got to keep asking for permission to do certain things. And then eventually I may end up not having that permission. So then I have to go clear back from scratch and re, um, resuscitate a lot of the um, ideas that I've had while working on this script. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, we will post some future updates here on this channel and also a channel that's going to be coming up shortly will go ahead and post that in the comment link down below or in the description field down below and we may end up um, <clears throat> having some of their videos on our channel and it's to say mm -hmm. um but to put a little feather in your cap we'll go ahead and just mention some um future ideas that we're having yep. on mm -hmm. like what we're going to bring more to the channel i know on um, the other gaming channel it's matt's kids wanted to start a channel yeah but and I don't have the information in front of me. Either, yeah. So. And it's not us making them. It's just them when they want to do something. Yeah. It might be like one of us editing it at the moment. But um, it's strictly going to be them. And it's going to be strictly geared towards children. Because of it being for kids. Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, other than that, there's a few other things that are probably going to come out within the next few months. Um, like I said in the beginning of the video, one of them being um, D and D. Um, we're planning on doing like a. We're planning on doing a D&D topic, which is going to go between beginner, like starting out, and then progressing more with more videos mm -hmm. to also progress the um, area of expertise mm -hmm. of that information. Yeah. We're also going to be doing some more comic topics, too. We're definitely going to be doing more comic topics. Mm -hmm. And for those yeah. that don't know, my brother does make his own comics. Mm -hmm. He has a wonderful idea for his comics and has done very well. I've seen the comics. Um... I think that he should put his comics out for sale. And I think that he should get on the ball in finalizing those comics. And if you guys are interested in finding a way to get in touch and um, want to see those comics come out, why don't you go ahead and leave a message down below and we'll give you a way to contact us and mm -hmm. 
we'll find a way to give that com those comics out to you. Or if you're interested in helping distribute comics or what is it, publishing? Mm -hmm. If you're interested in helping publish some comic work, then um, go ahead and um, a link to our um, to our um, email should be somewhere down below in the description. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, yeah, I think that's is it. there anything else that we should mention? I think that's it. Please like and subscribe. Um, push push all the buttons and the bells. And, and the, the whistles. whistles, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm John. I'm Zach. And have a flying monkey of a day. Yeah, try. Yeah, try to have a good day, everybody. Just no Vegeta today. My throat's bugging me, but <laughs> no Vegeta. <laughs> Why? <laughs> All right, folks. How do we sign off again? We can do Vegeta, so... Boo. Boo. <laughs> Boo.